Hi, this is Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 15, called the volume of a cone. All right, so today you worked on the volume of the cone, and one thing you found at the end was there is a formula. There's a formula for that. Volume of a cone is going to be equal to one third pi r squared times the height. Now remember, the volume of a cylinder was just this part right there. So what we found out really today was that a cone is one third of the volume of a cylinder. And if you think about this here, that just means that a cone, right, if we think about our cylinder from our lesson today, the cone fits inside of a cylinder like so. If it has the same radius and the same height, it's going to be a third of that volume. And that's what you talked about today in the lesson more than anything else. So on your first question, which is your cool down question from the lesson today, they want you to kind of explore this idea. It says a cone with the same base but a height three times taller than the given cylinder exists. What is the volume of each figure? Then you're going to do it in terms of pi. So we'll find just the cylinder volume, just like it is. Okay. And then I want you to sketch a cone and label the base and the height. Now remember the cone has a height that is what? What did it say? Three times as tall as what's over here. So three times four, which is going to be equal to 12. So sketch one with a same radius, same base, but a higher, a, a greater height. And then use your volume of the cone to figure out what the cone's volume would be. All right. I'll let you do number one because that's the cool down. Okay, number two. A cone has a diameter of six inches and a height of five inches. Find the volume in terms of pi, triple the height, and find the new volume triple the radius, find the new volume, and then compare. All right, well, diameter is not super helpful for us because we tend to use the radius, which is half of that for our equations. So we would say that the volume of the cone is going to be 1 third of pi times the radius, which is 3 squared times the height, which is 5. So 3 squared is going to be equal to 9 and we still have a one-third there. So don't get all hung up on the order of things here. One-third of nine, or nine divided by three, is gonna be equal to three. So three times five and a pi. And three times five is 15. And we keep pi just like it is, so 15 pi. This part says to triple the height. So let's come back to what we have so far. We know we already have that, pi times three, okay? because that works out there. I mean, I, if you want me to show you the whole thing, we, well, you're not going to tell me. Uh, let's do it. So let's do one-third times pi radius squared and triple the height. The height was 5, so 5 times 3 is 15. So we'll put a 15 right there. So this becomes 9. So we still have one-third pi times 9 times 15. We can reduce this to a 3. So we have pi times 3 times 15, and 3 times 15 is 45, and we keep pi right there where it is, okay? Now, let's triple the radius. Triple the radius means I have my 1 third pi, and the radius was 3, and we're going to triple it. So times 3 is equal to 9 but then I need to make sure I still square the radius. That's my new radius times the height, which is five. So we have one third pi times 81 times five. And one third of 81 is actually gonna be 27 times five and with a pi. And 27 times five is 135 and we keep pi. So we wanna compare the two volumes. So if I triple the height, I have 45 pi. If I triple the radius, I have 135 pi. So what we're seeing here is that the greater the radius is gonna be, the greater the volume is gonna be. So I could triple the height all I want, but the volume's gonna become larger if I increase the radius size. So write something about that there in that space. Number three. The volume of a cone with a 30 millimeter radius is 9,420 cubic millimeters. What is the height of the cone to the nearest millimeter? So again, we take our formula, 
So we have the volume equals one third pi r squared times h. They gave us a volume of nine four two zero equals one third for pi. Let's put in three point one four. For the radius, we have uh, thirty squared, and we don't know the height. So let's keep on bringing this down. This stays nine four twenty. This stays a third, this stays 3.14. 30 squared is going to be equal to 900, right? 30 times 30, 0, 0, 009, and times h. Now let's do one third of 900 is going to be 300. So 3.14 times 300 times h, all still equals 9420. If I divide both sides by 300, then I have 31.4 equals 3.14 h. If I divide both sides by 3.14, then I find out that 10 equals h. So what's the height? The height would be 10, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> Needs more space, but it definitely works out to that. Great. And the last three are just some computation ones here. So I'll give you one of these real quick. I'll do five since I'm sitting here. Uh, let's do negative 13, negative 13. In this case here, the signs are different. So I find the difference. So 11 minus 3 is 8. 2 minus 1 is 1. Which number has the greater absolute value? 31 or 13? The 31 does. So it's going to stay positive. And that equals negative 6x. And in this case here, we'll divide both sides by negative 6. So x equals 18 divided by 6 is 3. Positive divided by negative is a negative. So x equals negative 3. I'll let you solve 4 and 6 on your own for the day. That's it. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.